So members of the calcium group, like strontium and barium, will, bind, will substitute for the calcium and bind to the DNA. Now obviously something that's radioactive on the DNA is going to be more dangerous than something that's radioactive that's not on the DNA. And yet, of course, the ICRP this model just assumes, never mind about DNA, which wasn't even invented or discovered when, when, when the model was first put up. They just assume that you're a bag of water. I mean, they, they really do. There's a shape, a, a, a person-shaped bag of water, and the energy is just dissolved into it. So there's another, another area where it's easy to show theoretically that there, that there can be an error in terms of the energy density of the DNA of up to a thousand times. That's a big number, a thousand times. But actually, that's the number that you find when you start to look at the epidemiology. So when you look around the nuclear sites, and the latest big study of nuclear sites was in Germany, uh, carried out by the Childhood Cancer Registry in Germany, because the Green Party of Germany bounced them into doing this study, which they wouldn't otherwise have done. They found that there's a statistically significant excess of childhood cancer within five kilometers of all nuclear sites in Germany over the whole period that they've been run. And this was quite a big study, it's the biggest study of its kind. And although earlier we have found, people have found childhood leukemia, leukemia clusters near you know, other nuclear sites, notably from Sellafield and then from and then to Aldermaston, and then there was one at Kapitalhaag and one at Dudenray, and I've discovered them all over the place where there's nuclear. What, 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 is, what, what the point of the German study is that it was actually carried out by government and it's impossible to argue about the effects. What they say is that the doses were too low to cause the effects, therefore it can't have been radiation. But I, as, I've, as I've pointed out just now, theoretically it's possible to show that there can be an error by about a factor of about a thousand and they only need a factor of about 500 to explain the, these, these nucleoside clusters. So what I'm, what I'm getting to here is that the normal operation of a nuclear power station, the normal operation, I'm not talking about it exploding, or I'm not talking about bad guys who, who, who let leaks out and don't tell you about it, or any of this stuff, just standard operating of a nuclear power station kills people who live nearby. And in a study that we did recently that, was, that, that the BBC um, presented on Points West, we found that there was also an increase in, in infant mortality in Burnham on Sea, down the length of the Beacon Point plant, in exactly the same place where there was the breast cancer excess. So these nuclear power stations kill people. That's the first thing they have. They, 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 and, and we're not even talking about waste or any of that stuff. We're talking about just normal operation. They release huge amounts of radionuclides in normal operation all the time. So I'm going to just quickly whip through the health effects. This is a, a, a panoramic view it's coming back to the first releases. The first releases were, were the releases to the atmosphere during the atmospheric bomb testing between 1959 and 63. It is easy to show that these exposures to people who were born around that time, who were younger around that time, or, or particularly to women whose breasts were developing around that time, were the cause of an enormous cancer epidemic, which you all know about. The cancer epidemic that you all know about is caused by the atmospheric weapons testing. And there's enough evidence that that is so, which I don't have time to go through here. But essentially, it began with a study of areas like Wales, where there was a lot of fallout, and comparing it to areas of England where the fallout was less. So that's the first thing. During the weapons testing period, there was also a big increase in infant mortality that was first discovered in the United States. And in all of the databases in the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, uh, this increase in infant mortality occurred at the time of the weapons fallout. There was also an increase in child leukemia. Then after that, what happened was that we had these, the nuclear power leukemia clusters, which you all know about, which I've just talked about. And then following that, I started to, I, I figured out that if children were dying of leukemia in nuclear power stations, it might be interesting to look at the adults, because it's not just going to be the children that are affected. If the effects are there, they're going to affect everybody. So when we looked, we found that there was a doubling in breast cancer mortality around every single nuclear power station where we did the study. So that's the next thing. Then the next thing that came along was Chernobyl. Well, Chernobyl caused an enormous uh, release of this radio radioactivity, these substances, uh, to, 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 um, to large areas of Europe. Uh, and there was a huge argument about whether there were any effects or not. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the people in the nuclear lobby 
you said that there weren't any effects, but, but the people who studied them in the Soviet Union have, have written hundreds of papers that show that there were increases in cancer of every sort, there was a shortening of the lifespan, there were increases in heart disease, there was a, there was a, a meltdown in the health in populations of people who were highly affected. But like Belarus, the, the, um, the demographic index in Belarus has fallen below replacement now as a result of the effects of Chernobyl. Four out of five children born in Belarus are sick. It's absolutely appalling, and this has all been covered up. In Sweden in 2004, Martin Fondel uh, at, uh, at uh, was it Uppsala? Anyway, uh, he, he, uh, a young epidemiologist studied the effects of Chernobyl in the, in the northern territories of Sweden, looking at um, a correlation between cesium-137 and uh, cancer, and found an 11% increase in cancer for every 100 kilobacterols of cesium. So there was a positive correlation between the cesium contamination from Chernobyl in Sweden, in Sweden. <laughs> There's a huge increase in cancer in Sweden as a result of Chernobyl. And we found the same effect in Wales. There was a sharp increase in cancer in Wales after Chernobyl. Sellafield has been releasing huge amounts of radioactivity to the Irish Sea. There's a sharp 40% increase in cancer all along the coast of the Irish Sea on the, on the Welsh side and also on the Irish side. But there's no, there's no effect on the, on the Atlantic coast. So these are some examples of the health effects of these radionuclides. And so now I think I'll just go to the... Oh yes, and there's the atomic test spectrum, is that right? That's right, okay. There are a number of cases on the atomic test spectrum. Now the nuclear test spectrum, is the, the men who were out there at the time of the nuclear test, their children have suffered a, a tenfold excess of, of, of uh, congenital anomalies, and their grandchildren also. And this is a very scary thing. This is also what we're finding in Iraq. Because what has been discovered in the last 10 years is that there's a, there's a biological process called genomic instability in which a signal is sent to the genome to cause it to increase its general process at its general level of, of, of genetic mutation. And nobody knows quite why this is. It might be something evolutionary advantage, but whatever it is, what it means is that if your child, if, if you get irradiated, then your child will suffer a high level, of, a high risk of congenital malformation and also the grandchild, and also the great-grandchild. In studies that were done with, with voles in the Chernobyl affected territories, they have followed 22 generations of voles, and this signal is there in all of these generations, and it's still continuing. So what we are doing with nuclear power, and what we have done with nuclear energy, is we have poisoned the genome of the planet. Because we have done this. We have done this. And it's, actually, it's the worst public health scandal in recorded history. It's truly extraordinary, and it's impossible to, 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 get, to, to break through some sort of plate glass, uh, plate glass barrier between, between the science on the one side now and the politicians on the other. And I'll give you two examples of why this is, and I'm going to go to Sweden for this. Uh, in Sweden, they have a huge amount of radioactivity in the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is now the best radioactive in the world. The reason is that it's got no exit. So any radiation that goes in there from Chernobyl or from the fallout stays there. So the sediment in the Baltic is 10,000, 100,000 hectares per square meter. That's 100,000 disintegrations per second in a piece of table the size of a square meter. You can imagine. Very radioactive. And this is causing effects all along the coast of Sweden. But these effects are not looked at because the medical officer of health for Sweden is one Dr. Lars Eric Hall. Lars Eric Hall. Now, what was his last job, Lars Eric Hall? His last job was the head of the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Now, you might well ask how the president of the ICRP suddenly becomes the head of the health service. Very interesting question. And at very minimum, uh, it, it has to be a conflict of interest. But right here in Oxford, I did a court case here in 1998. There were two old ladies who could cut their way through all the monsters. And, uh, and, and tried to stop the atomic weapons establishment from functioning. And we went into court, and what did we discover? We discovered that the head of the Oxfordshire Health Authority was the ex head of the Atomic Energy uh, Agency in Harlow. Okay? So, that, so what I'm saying is that these people put placemen in positions of critical power. That's the problem. And so this is the reason why this plate glass uh, barrier exists between the real science that we now have 
There's hundreds and hundreds of papers showing this to be so. The unequivocal evidence that, that, that these substances are killing, killing you, killing your grandmother, killing your wife, your girl, killing your babies. And the fact that these people can continue with their project to, 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 to buy to build more and more nuclear power stations and create more and more nuclear waste. And Sweden is now where they want to put the nuclear waste. They have a place under the Baltic called Forsmark where they're building an enormous repository. And the man who is allowing them to do that is the medical officer of Health of Sweden, who was also the head of the ICRP, and he was also the head of the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, and the head of the Swedish uh, Institute on Radiological Protection. And he goes right back to when he started, when he falsified the evidence that radio iodine caused cancer. And there's absolutely incontrovertible no evidence that he falsified his research. And this is how it became famous. And this is just one example. So I could go on and on and on and on, but I'm sure I've run out of time. So I, I, I have to leave, leave, leave you with, 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 with the evidence that I can provide in the time I had available. So thank you.